everyone, Nick Cohen here from the Hyperactive Bookworm. Welcome to my cozy Sunday night book review time with my Udi and my dinner, which I'll eventually get there. So this book is one that I procrastinate, like I bought it quite a while ago and I procrastinated reading it for, well, a very long time. What ended up pushing me to actually finally just go, you know what, just read it, is um, the Sapphic Book Challenge of Jay's. And one of the categories is um, books you don't read, you normally read, like so a genre you don't normally read, I think it is. Can't remember the exact wordage, but um, I really struggled because I, I read almost everything. So I thought, what's the thing I read the least? And it's memoirs. So this is a memoir that, it's it's called Queerly Beloved. I don't know if you guys can, uh, might be too bright. I'll chuck up a picture. Anyway, um, so it's called Queerly Beloved, A Love Story Across Genders. And it's written by Diane and Jacob Anderson Minchel. So... I was fascinated by the very idea of this book when I first heard about it because of the situation. So, hey, if you've not watched any of my videos before and you've stumbled upon me, hi. Um, and even if you haven't, you, you may not know this, but I do talk about it a lot, probably ad nauseum. But I'm a lesbian. I'm married to a man. When we first got married, he was not a man. We had a lesbian wedding um, a few years into our marriage. You guys know he's actually transgender. So he has since transitioned and we are still married. And I do still identify as a lesbian. It's been like I would not change my life. I love it too much. Um, and I love him. And I... We've been ups and downs and I wouldn't change it for the world, but it's hard for a lot of people to understand. Um, I've been called a lot of things because I still identify as a lesbian and um, there's been struggles. So to read this memoir is very, it's very, very close to home and I wasn't sure how I was going to deal with it. Um... And I don't read a lot of memoirs, like I said. I very rarely read biographies, any kind of people's private lives. Very few. In my whole life have I read that. Um, the non-fictions I do normally read are things like writing craft or um, learning about a specific topic, not about a, sp a person's life. So this was really fascinating. I... I can't bring myself to star it at all like um because I think it's such a personal thing like perhaps if I read more memoirs I'd be able to give it a kind of rating but I, I find that I I just I, I've not been able to put my head into that um rating it sort of idea um I enjoyed it I also struggled with it, not as much as I thought I would. Like, I thought it would be emotional. I thought it would really trigger me. Um, and perhaps a few years ago it would have. Um, I feel like I'm... Maybe, maybe that's why I didn't read it. Maybe I, I have actually waited till I felt prepared to read it. Um, I think it's a good book for educational purposes for those that don't know about some of the struggles that this sort of situation can can have however I also highly recommend that if people do read it as an educational thing that they understand that this is simply these two individuals experiences in the world which I guess is what all memoirs are however because there's not a lot um, of these around or at least that I found if you have if you know more of these please put them in the comment let me know message me um, because it is nice to feel um, seen I guess yeah 
to feel seen, to not feel alone, to feel like there are other people in similar situations. They're very different people. Their lives are very different because of their age, so the time. Also, they're American. Um, there's all these different cultural things that of course change it. And my Udi is getting quite warm, but we will work through that. Um, so I, yeah, so was it informative? Yes. Was it at times repetitive? Yes. Am I glad I read it? Yes. Do I recommend it? Yes and no, for the same reasons I said earlier. Um, I did find that there were some chapters I just didn't, I just, I just didn't get why I needed to know this about these people's private lives. But I guess that's sort of a memoir thing. Um, so I found that I, I was surprised that I was sort of like, yep, okay, move on from this chapter. Um, I did, however, really enjoy the the honesty, the brutal honesty that um, they presented. Um, their, their lives have been fascinating. Don't get me wrong. I've been really interested by it and their experiences through this, um, this change in their lives. Um, it, it's quite interesting and it was confronting at times and I did, I did feel very vindicated, vindicated? No, is that the right word? Very, yeah, vindicated, I guess. Um, just about some of the things that Diane went through, her thoughts, her worries, her fears. Some of them I totally understood. Um, some of them I didn't, but like I said, different people, um, different experiences, different times in their lives, different cultures, they all play an impact, make an impact. But there were some things that I highlighted in the book that I was like, yep, um, this I love that they've mentioned this, or this I've loved that they, you know, just the way they've said this. And there was one thing that Jacob said that I loved. <coughs> well, there was quite a bit actually, but he specifically pointed out, he said, as a trans person, I worry that as one of the few visible trans people, I'll be taken as representing all trans folk, but we're a very large and diverse community. And that hits exactly what I was saying. Like, it's a good book. It's it's great to see other people's experiences. Um, and then also I felt like my heart gave a little sigh a few times when Diane mentioned I loved it when she um, talked about the fact that, like she says at one point, I wasn't planning to change my identity as a lesbian simply because my partner's gender identity had changed. And that's one of the main things that I think people get confused at in relationships similar to mine and my partners is gender and gender identity and sexual identity are actually different. My sexual identity does not rely on my partner's gender identity. And I'm there's there's a lot on it and I, I think it would be triggering for a lot of people especially if they're in the beginning of this it could also be very helpful for them it's so nice to see more um, representation out there and it, it must be hard especially putting something like this out because they do not keep anything out basically they just let it all out and I'm blown away blown away by their openness and honesty um and yeah so like it's definitely a good book some flaws yes so I'm, I'm really still struggling to try and rate it but it would it would sit for me between a three and a four star um but I personally think all memoirs would probably sit between there and there for me because of the fact that I just, they're just not for me, really, overall. 
I am glad I read this. I am really glad I read it. And yeah, I like I said, I recommend it. Just be aware that it is what, like two people's. I keep saying one person's. Two people's experiences um, with this. But it's definitely helped me feel seen. And it was good for me to see another, to read about another person's point of view from what he's been going through as well, not just from my perspective. Um, so yeah, so that's my Sunday night book review um, of Queerly Beloved, which I absolutely did adore. Um, like the, there was heaps of stuff to adore about it, about these human beings who have gone through a lot and stayed together and they've, you know, they, they've stayed, they've stayed true to themselves. I, my heart breaks for Jacob that, you know, for so long he struggled with it, but then at the same time, the journey is what it is. So yeah, I, I enjoyed the book. Have t Take a look, see if it's something for you. Um, yeah. But yeah, let me know if you if you know of other books like this that do have um, more transgender representation, whether non-fiction or fiction, because it does seem to still be difficult. Um, I seem to see a lot of transgender representation for male to female, but there does seem to be a lot less of female to male, and it would be it would be cool to to see a few more like that. So hopefully you like my Sunday night review. I'm going to try and do a book review every Sunday night because I read several books every week and yeah, most of, you know, there's at least one of the books I read every week that deserves a review. So I will catch you guys later and have a great week.